Hi everyone, welcome back to Useful Genetics. This is Lecture 3E, where we're talking about structural proteins. We'll talk a bit about what we need structural proteins for, what kinds of functions they serve, and use an example structural protein, the skin protein elastin, as an example of how structure and function are two sides of the same thing. Now, we need structural proteins for lots of things in our bodies. Basically, they're proteins that assemble into multimers, complexes of many copies of the same protein, um, forming bodily structures. Things like our hair, the tendons that hold our bones together, our fingernails, our bones themselves, the crystalline lens of our eye, are all the products of structural proteins. Most of the, the matrix of our body is produced by structural proteins. Usually they consist of one or sometimes a few kinds of subunits, and they're often interwoven in complex ways. They're held together into stable structures by protein-protein interactions, the same kinds of biochemical interactions that hold the different parts of a folded protein together also hold together the different protein subunits in a structural protein complex. Um, many of them may also have catalytic activities. Now, I'm only going to talk about one example, but it's one you may have heard of. If you're female, if you buy makeup, you may have seen there's lots of makeup that advertises that it's got elastin in it. And they're piggybacking on what we know about what elastin does. Elastin monomers join together into a complex tangle, and that tangle can stretch out when it's under tension. So it, it's like an elastic. When you pull on it, when the body pulls on it, if you pull on your skin and your skin stretches, part of the reason your skin can stretch is because elastin monomers themselves can stretch out when under tension. Their structure isn't stiff and rigid, but flexible. They're in all of our elastic tissues, not just our skin, but the walls of our arteries, because they have to stretch as the blood is pumped through them. They're in our lungs. Our lungs have to expand when we breathe in and shrink down when we breathe out. They're in our bladder. That's part of how we, our bladder can get filled up and stretch. And then, oh, that feels better when we empty it. Our cartilage, the flexibility and stretchiness of our cartilage is partly due to elastin. It's added to skincare products because it serves such an important function in skin. It's easy to convince gullible consumers that adding elastin on the outside of your skin is going to help make your skin more elastic. But of course, that's not the case. The elastin that makes your skin elastic is underneath the cells of your skin. Adding elastin on the outside isn't going to do any good at all. It's just going to wash off when you wash your face. Now, here's a diagram, a schematic diagram, of cross-linked fibers of elastin. Um, you can think of the elastin monomers as being folded up into complex tangles. And then these tangles are held together. The monomers of elastin are held together by cross-linking bonds, here shown in red. These are covalent bonds that form between different elastin monomers. And they're called cross-links because they link across from one monomer to the next. And they're at a number of different places in the protein because elastin protein contains a relatively high proportion of the amino acid lysine. And the lysines are capable of forming these crosslinks. Now what happens when you pull on this tangle is that it can stretch out. The individual elastin monomers stretch out they don't come apart because they're held together by the crosslinks. So even though you're pulling on one molecule, that stretch, is, that stretch is transmitted along the length of the molecule, of the complex of elastins. 
So your skin can stretch, but when the pressure is released, your skin relaxes back into its normal shape. Of course, the older you get, the less well this works. But that's the basic principle of what elastin does. Now, so what we've done, we've considered proteins that function as physical structures, and we've examined one important human example, elastin, um, where you can see how the structure of elastin, the tangle of the backbone of the monomer, and the cross-linking of individual elastin monomers into a large elastin network creates a stretchy structure that can extend itself when it's under tension and then relax back into a compact structure when the tension is released. Coming up next, we're going to think about transport proteins, um, proteins that transport molecules across membranes and around our bodies. I hope to see you there.